Okay, I'm going to be demonstrating how to create some different rule lines, dotted and dashed, and then I'm going to show you how to warp some type. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my line segment tool, they call it. I just call it a rule line. And I'm just going to hold down my shift key as I draw. And I'm going to go to the lines or the stroke tool right here. And you can make it thicker or thinner in here. Um, you already know how to add the arrowheads, so this will be on the left, this one will be on the right, but we don't need that for this. So to make a dashed line, you just click on this, and if you don't see this whole menu, you want to open up the options button. Um, so sometimes your menu might look like this, in which case you would just click on this button and say show options. And then you click on dashed, and that's just a standard dashed line. Um, some really neat things that you can do, make it bigger, you can make the edges of each line rounded. So you would click on this cap, so you see that it's a rounded edge now. And then you can also control how long the dash should be. So right now it's just set to 12 point. You can click on the word dashed, dash, and then click on your up arrow on your keyboard. And you'll see that the dashes are getting longer. You can also control the gap. So right now there is no number here, but we can click in here and we can just type in, let's say two to begin with. And then I'll hit my tab key just to commit that change. And so that, that's two close together. So I'll click on gap again, click on my up arrow. So now I'm controlling the space between the dashes. So dash and gap. Now we're gonna keep this on the cap round and Let's see, the dash has to be set to zero. So set this to zero, hit the tab key so it's committed, and now it's a round dot. If you wanna make the space between the dots smaller, again, that's the gap. So I'm gonna click on the down arrow on my keyboard. So now it's making the space less. Um, if you wanted to make the dots bigger, then that would be here, because then the, the weight of the stroke is getting thicker, right? like we did at the beginning. So now these are getting, so the overall line is thicker, and then it's a dot because we have zero for the dash, because we don't want it to be a line, we just want it to be a dot. And then if we want to open up the spacing, then of course you click on here and hit the, so I, I, I like to just click on the word, and then I'm gonna hit the up arrow to increase the space between the dots. These two things here, this is pretty important, it doesn't really matter when you just have a line, but let me get rid of this and just delete that. Okay, let's say I have a square and it's gonna have all those same settings right here. So I'm gonna increase this and maybe I'll make my dot smaller. Okay, so take a look at what it's doing here. The dots are not even all going all the way around. They kind of crash into each other. That's because it's trying, Illustrator is trying to remember that we want 11 points for the gap. So it's trying to maintain that. But if you want it to be even, then you can click on this control right here and then Illustrator will just make the adjustments. So even though it's not exactly 11, it's pretty close. So that's a really nice uh, feature. Okay, now another type of dash line is we'll do the same straight line holding down the shift key. If we don't want that rounded dash, we can click back here. So remember the thickness of my line is controlled by the weight. So the thickness, or in this case, looks like the height is getting bigger here. If we click off dashed line, it's gonna look like that. Okay, click, click it back on. And then I can just type in maybe a one for the dash and hit tab or return. So the, the width of these individual dashes can get thicker here. Click on the word dash, hit the up arrow, and now it's getting thicker that way. So this can create some really fun logos. Um, if you ever create a whole bunch of circles, then my selection, and then just delete that. But here's a quick example. So I'm gonna change this to a circle or ellipse. I'm holding down my option and shift. So um, let's see, shift con constrains it so it's a perfect circle an option just enlarges or reduces from the middle, from the center. Okay, so here's one circle. 
I can copy and then paste in front, and I'll do it here so you can see what I do. Edit, copy, edit, paste in front, and notice the shortcuts, Command C, Command F. And this one I'll change back to a rounded, and we'll make that those smaller dots. Let's see, I'll make them closer together. Um, but then I want them to be dots, so remember this needs to be zero. And then I want them to be evenly spaced so that they don't crash into each other. So I'm going to click on this one. Okay, so now it's perfectly even, which is good if you're anal, like me. And then I want to bring that inward. And then maybe there's one out here. Whoops. Um, let's see, I'm going to copy, right? Command C, Command F, paste in front. And then I'm going to Option Shift, drag outward. And maybe this one, I don't know. Maybe this one is just wider here. I don't have any reference, so I'm just kind of making it up. You can also do a star shape. So I'm going to go to the ellipse, go to the star tool, and here's a couple different stars. If you just drag outward, it'll create this kind of star or a straight star that curve. Then you just hold down your shift. If you want this kind of star, and I'm holding down the option or alt maybe on a PC. So it creates um, that kind of star. If you want more points on the star, Okay, let's get rid of the dashed line. We don't need that anymore. And we can use a smaller star. You can switch it so it's a solid star. But let me see if I can do this on my trackpad instead. I wish you could see my hands, but my fingers are all over my keyboard. I'm pressing my Option Shift with my left fingers, and then I'm using a trackpad right now. So my, my thumb and my pointer are pressing down on the trackpad, and I'm feeling pain. <laughs> And then I'm using my up, uh, let's see, I'm pressing the up arrow with my pinky to add more points. Before you're finished drawing, you can do this, okay? So the smallest number of points, of course, would be a triangle, because there's three sides. And then you can just go up to infinity and add as many points or sides as you want. You can let go. And then let's say I want this in the middle. So I'm gonna center all of these together. And I like using my align tool. So I go to align to selection, click on the center here and here, and then click on this again. And I'm going to make it bigger because maybe I want it to go on the outside of all this. Okay, and then I'll send that to the back. So I just do um, object, arrange, send to back. And then I want to lock it so I can gra grab everything else. So I'm just going to do um, selection or command two right here. It's a really good shortcut. And then I grab everything else. And instead of black, I'm just going to make that white so I can see it. Okay, it does not look good at all. So I'm not showing you how to design something. This is not a design. I'm just showing you how to use the different controls. Notice though that this one right here, if you can see it, is um, thicker, right? That's because I didn't have this thing checked. So if I do that, I selected all of them because it doesn't matter. Like I can change all of them to this one then it fixes that overlapped line. Okay, so that's kind of that, the dashed lines. I'm gonna unlock this, Command Option 2 and delete. Okay, then to do warped text, and I just wanna warn you that if you do this, don't overdo it, because it can look bad really fast if you make it too obvious. I'm just gonna use uppercase. Uppercase usually looks better for warped text. And I'll say hungry, because I'm really hungry right now. I'm going to make it bigger, and I'm going to close up my tracking. So I'm doing Option or Alt left arrow. And I'm going to make it center so that anytime I make a change, then it'll stay in place. So I selected Option or Alt left arrow. OK, then you can go to Effect, Warp, and then you do see all these choices here. You can, I just start to, with Arc, because once you're in this control panel, then you can select them again. Okay, and you'll see that the default setting just like makes it really, really curved, which is kind of too much. So we're going to bring that down. And as long as preview is selected, then you can see it. So you can just play with this on your own and see what they do. Some of them look better than others. And you can 
change the bend. So this like looks really funky, doesn't look very good. But if you make it a negative bend, that has kind of a cool look. Um, here's another one, arc upper. And then, yeah, so just try these. These are really fun. But just remember, don't, please don't overdo it. Okay. The distortion, I usually don't play with this too much, but you can if you want. Okay, so you can change the vertical, the horizontal, and just see what those do. This one is really fun, bulge. Okay, so this just looks weird, like a bulging balloon, but if you make it negative, it has kind of that, sort of that surfer look to me. Okay, so let's just click OK, and then you're like, oh, I'm happy with it. But if you wanted to change it, you don't want to go back to that effect warp, because then it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to add another one? So what you do, if you want to modify this, you go here. This is your appearance panel. Click on that, and then here's the effect, the special effect that popped up. So then you can click on that, and then it shows up with your settings, and then you can adjust anything you want. Okay, and then the nice thing about using these effects is just, you know, you can hide it and then show it again.